Right, we are live to, with North East Boxing Players tonight. We have a very special guest in the Bulls, Paul Ball. Paul had a 90 amateur fight career with 65 wins, won the NYPC Championships, which is also known as the Boys Club Championships. The junior year of years, the senior year of years, where he won every single round in every fight. Um, Boxing Box England over 25 times, went to the Olympic qualifiers for Beijing, where narrowly missed out by two points. For our Paul Town freshman in 2010, two times Paul Town in IBF and WWE World Cup, and he's a great silver fight to collect films. I'm all good, mate. Thanks for having me. It's been a while, but we're here now. Well, it's a pleasure, Paul, mate. Thanks for your time. Do you want to go back to your childhood, Paul, and why you got into boxing in the first place? Yeah, mate. I was I was always football. I was football mad as a kid. I was always good the kids who I, I, I always knocked around with in school and that it was always football. And um I remember going to one of my mates on a Saturday, um, just round his his mum and dad's and we were only ten. And um we got the, the pillars and we started messing around, just fighting, like using them as gloves, but pillars. And um I remember going home and just saying to my dad, Can I, can I go boxing? And he was like, Of course, yeah, I'll I'll take you boxing. I've done a few sessions and no word of a lie, Francis. I stopped playing footy from that day and I probably didn't put a proper pair of, pair of football boots on. I played now and again in school um, for the school team. Yeah. Um, but I probably didn't put a proper pair of football boots on again until I was about 18 for a pub team again. I didn't bother with it. I was just strictly boxing. How old were you, Paul, when you walked into a boxing gym? I was 10 years old. I was a 10 year old. I was a 10 year old lad and. I just walked in there, um, basically because I just, I just, I loved the the buzz of getting it in the face, and you, you see kids now, and well, even back then, they they didn't really like getting punched, and they did back away and stuff. But I, I loved it. I didn't mind. I didn't mind a little bit of lever in the face. Do you know what I mean? And and uh, I'm so the eyes don't they, when they punch you Yeah, that's it. They, they shut their eyes and they and they cower away. But I wasn't one of them, and I think that's half the battle in boxing as well. I think. If you if you don't mind taking a little swack Definitely. now and again, then I think I, I think you, you you'll do well in the sport. Proper scouser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how old were you when you had your first fight? I was eleven. As soon as I turned eleven, my medical because back then it was eleven. It's ten now. Um, I train the amateurs now, and it's mm. ten. You can have skills bouts and everything now. I, there was nothing like that when I was about no skills. We were just straight in for contests. As soon as I turned eleven, I had my first. I had a kid from Wales. Um, he'd had two one two, and we 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 done we done a deal. I'd box him on their show, and then they'd box us on our show. So he'd had two one two. I beat him, and then he came back to our show, and I beat him again. So I uh, I think I think I had my first loss after five fights by a kid called Wang Guzman in America. He's now a coach, not the actual Wang Guzman who who won world titles and that, but his name was Wang Guzman. He's a coach now. He's got it. He's got a gym in in America. So after after your first loss as an amateur, what did you, what was your thoughts? And what did you still like? Because a lot of people quit, don't they? To be honest, cried my eyes out, cried my eyes out, and um, a fella called uh, oh, I'll think of his name in a minute. He sat me down. He he boxed Barry McGuigan and that, and he said, "Listen to me." He said, "You'll come back to the garden as a world champion." And ever since he said that, I always had that goal in my head that. Wow, I want to be a world champion. Now he said it from eleven years of age. He watched me. He said, "I've never seen eyes and feet like that. You see everything coming." He said, "You'll be a world champion one day." Mark my words. And ever since then, I always wanted to be a world champion. He always said, "I'll be a world champion, me." And obviously, as a kid, loads of people just think, "Oh, he's just saying that." Do you know did what I mean? But did you believe me? Well, how old were you first? That that was at eleven. I probably didn't so how believe old were you it then. When you first lost the title, you're probably about fourteen. No, I was older than that. I was 16. Yeah, I didn't win none of the school boys. The boys' oh, clubs, yeah. I think it was my second year. I think it was my second year. I won the boys' clubs, the NACYPs, it was called back then. Um, and then I won the juniors. And then England started selecting us in like four nations, tri-nations against Italy, um, Sweden, all places like that. Um, I didn't get beat for England. Uh, and then it was on to GB then after that. Uh, and then a box for GB about 20 odd times, something like that. GB, I weren't really a fan of GB to be fair. It was training four times a day. And I think 
at the age of 18. I thought it was a little bit too much for you us. Know. What was that? I weren't a fan of GB, no. I think it was just too much for us, especially at 18. Do you think it was grinding you down that to where you stayed, like? Yeah, I think, I do think it was, it was too much. And I think four times a day for an 18-year-old back then um, was probably too much. And it, it made me dislike the sport. But then I'd go back to my own gym. Yeah. Back then as a kid, I think, well, 18, it's not a kid now, is it? But do you know what I mean? I, I, I was still I was still a kid. I was still a baby. Four times a day, I just you just sort of fall Never out of love with it. But then when I get back to my own club, I'd love it again. I'd get that buzz back. Um, and it was every two weeks, GB, back then. I think it's every week now. But uh, it was every two weeks. So once I'd get back to my own club, I loved it. And I, I had that buzz back because I was with my mates and... Do you know what I mean? I was training twice a day back at home instead of four times a day down GB. Well, twice a day, mate, is enough even at that GB level, really, isn't it? To be honest, yeah, the that, I thought so, yeah. Like, we, at, at most now, even at top end of pro level, I think it's twice a day of training. Two hard sessions, like, but no more than two. Do you know what I mean? We were training four times a day on GB. So you won the senior ABA, and obviously you never lost a round in that, did you? Like that must be there can't be many fights made in Britain to do that, you know. No, it was the old computer scoring. You used to get the ticket, you know, end of each round. And um, yeah, at the end of each yeah. round, at the end of each round, we used to get a ticket. It used to tell you the score. My coach used to tell me the score. And uh, yeah, I didn't lose a round in out the whole ABAs. Um, won every round the box well. You know. That year, that year was the only year because I'd entered it for four years. That was my fourth year, I think. That was the only year I didn't say I'm going to win it this year. I'm going to win it this year. I used to just say, uh, "We'll just see how we get on this year." Every year previously, I say I'll win it this year. I'll win it this year. That year, I was like, "Well, we'll just see how we go." Just took the pressure off myself. Do you know what I mean? Who beat you, like Paul? Who was beating you? Who was Thomas beating Dubs you in the seniors, like for the three years Thomas. before? Tommy Stubbs beat me twice, um, one on a count back and one five four. Uh, I personally don't think he won any of them, but he did. So let him have that. And uh, Cal Yafai beat me in my first final. Was is he a big puncher, Cal Yafai? Because he, he's got a reputation for one, and he especially in the amateurs he did. Back then we were both only eighteen. Um, that was my first senior ABAs. Back then, no, but. Looking at what he's done going on from there, it looks like he is a bit of a puncher. Um but back then no. But we, we were only we were Does only lads. Back then we were only eighteen. It did it didn't oh, feel like no. Obviously you missed out on going to the Olympics mate in Virgin by two points. That's our Britain that by the way. So mm. like is that what the more made you want to turn fresh or that? No, um I didn't. I, I, how old was I then? I think I was. I think I was still only eighteen, nineteen, and um, when I went to the Olympic really, qualifier. Yeah, I think. And then I had a couple of years then um, of of competing for GB, and I thought, right, I'll, I'll hang around till the Commonwealth Games or something. Went in the ABAs at the age of twenty. Won them by the time I was twenty-one, and then um, from then. Sorry, the dogs are kicking off. From then, I just thought, do you know what? This GB setup weren't for me because uh, I think uh, McCracken had just took over and I didn't go to an assessment thing yeah. and he said, oh, I don't think this is for you. So I, ju I just went away and I turned pro. I went in the ABAs, I won the ABAs and I turned pro from there. I just thought, I can't I can't be asked with people telling me that I don't think this is for you or I don't think you, you've got what it takes. So I just thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'll I'll go my way, and I, I turned pro, and then I turned pro with Frank, and then the rest is history from there. Obviously, you turned pro, and you had your debut against uh, Amal Al Fadi, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, nightmare of an opponent for your debut. He was at my amateur gym. He beat Ashley Sexton. He beat Ashley Sexton, mate. In um, amateurs, you know. He was a good amateur, mate. He boxed for England and that in the amateurs. He won. He won the national title. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, won, won the national title. He was a good kid, didn't he? Fair. Yeah, he was a bit older than me, but so in I, I you, what what was your what did you expect to yourself when you turned first of all? What were you thinking that you could achieve? I definitely wanted to win a British title. That was my minimum, do you know what I mean? That was my absolute minimum, win a British title. Um but once I did get to British level, 
I think I got to British level pretty quick. It was only nine fights and I'd won the British title. And then everyone was touting me to be the next superstar, the next world champion. Um, yeah. And then the rise from from British title to world title was was pretty quick. Like I think they ju they just took me to Commonwealth. Were you ready for? Um, I think when I beat Stewie All, I think I probably wasn't quite ready for it. But it was Stewie All, so it was a good chance to actually take the world title because he was a previous sparring partner of mine and knew what I was getting with him. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I probably wasn't ready for it then, but it was a good time to put a world title to my name. So I think once you're world level, you're there, aren't you? Like you, yeah, that's your level at your world level, really. You're the man, then, aren't you? You're the man. You're you're the target for the big boys. Um, and I think I dropped down a weight then from Stewie Hall. That was always the plan, always to give up the title, go back down. Uh, and obviously yeah. bumped into Solani Tete, unheard of. No one had heard of him. Um, there was only a few little tapes floating around of him. And them tapes were like three, four, knockouts, you know, you were 19 knockouts. And I think 16 of them were in the first three rounds. He's dangerous, mate. Well, he proved it, didn't he? Even after you, mate, he proved it like he's a well-known yeah. fighter. But just talking about it, he's just been caught for being cheating, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just got a three-year ban, I think. Um after the Cunningham fight, it was uh, Stan Oswald. I written it down. I remember Stan Oswald. Somebody in his uh, system. It was. Who was that? Stan. He had Stan Oswald. Something like that. I, don't, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but something like that in his system. It was. He yeah. got the it four, doesn't surprise. Yeah, but he just got. He was that big when he got in the ring against me. I thought. I thought it was his twin brother or something getting in the ring. I thought, wow, he's massive. I remember him taking his gown <laughs> off. I remember him taking a gown off and I had it back to me. And I thought, fuck me, size of him. Because with the IBF, you've got that rule of £10 the day later. And we both weighed yeah. in £7 pound over what we'd put the next day, uh, the day before, sorry. And then from then, he just went huge. I just thought, wow, he's massive. Yeah, what he was, was his huge. Power like? was very, very what good. Was his power he, like? he came out. Very good. He came out first round and he threw a jab to the body and I thought, wow, that's serious, that. Very first jab to the body. Your, I thought, wow. What was your game plan going into that fight? Like, did you think you... What, what was your game plan to outbox him over the distance or... I'll be honest with you, like, I probably didn't Did you have game plans back then? Did you, um, did didn't you even have a game plan. The, the trainer I was with... Um, when did your game plan go in? When I joined Joe. He's a, he's a tactician and he made Joe. Yeah, when I joined Joe, it was literally everything like to the T. Do you know what I mean? We we knew when, we knew what he was going to do when he moved his left foot. We knew pretty much. We I boxed Dewey all the second time round, and it was just a masterclass. And I thought, wow, that was just like night and day from the first. Was one. that from Joe? That was from Joe's tactics. Yeah, just from Joe's tactics. I knew everything he was going to do. I just thought, um. Every time I landed a shot, Joe says, every time you land a shot in that first fight, he comes back with a double jab backhand, he chases you. Just let the backhand go over the top. And if you go back on that second fight with Stewie Hall, he comes in, he comes in, boom, I land the right hand over the top every time. And I thought, wow, so easy when you know what you're doing, when you've got a game plan. But with the that's Tete fight... Simple, I'll as have a fighting mate, you go and see that sometimes, do you? Yeah, like the Tete fight, I'll go back to the Tete fight. Didn't have a game plan, it was just left hook, left hook left hook and I was like wow it weren't like jab your way in slip inside boom there it is it was there was there was nothing there I mean obviously mate you proved yourself at world level right, by the fights you beat do you know what I mean you've been in the way for 11 rounds fighting for there's only five fighters by the way from Britain to ever fight from the spirit in the four belt era you're one of them it's two of them are from the world you're ones below yeah wow. you and uh, you and be you and yeah, below from the world then there's been John Ryder Jack Catwell, and I think it's Josh Taylor, not it, in the football era. Wow. I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? So you, that's the, the credit you've got to me and the, what you did. But what was it like coming back? That, that was hard, mate, because it was my first loss as well. I think I was 17 and now. I think you believe you're unbeatable because everyone's got hype around you. You think, ah, oh, no one will beat me, no one will beat me. And then, boom, I got caught with that shot. Um, it was hard to come back from that, and then I was left on the sidelines for like eight months as well. So eight months of sitting around waiting for a fight, and then you've got—I wouldn't say demons because I'm quite mentally strong. Like 
but you, you've got the thought in the head where you're thinking, would that happen again? Like, would someone else catch me with that shot? Um, but as soon as I got back in there, and I stopped, I think I stopped did a Mexican in five rounds after when I come back. Um, it just it just wipes everything away. You feel like, thank fuck for that type thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad I was in there. I'm glad that's done with now. I'm glad that's so put to bed. So you face a lot of demons, and you don't did you doubt yourself a lot in camp you, before that fight got like going into the first fight after Teto. Did you have a lot yeah, of doubt? I think, around? I think you think. I think you think. Um, oh, what if someone else catches me with that shot? Like they're all doing their own work on that uppercut. Um, and we've I've seen a few people look for it in in fights. You know what I mean? Like as he comes in through the uppercut because Since with that. the with day one it, he was a southpaw as well, and I hadn't boxed a southpaw for five years because I hadn't boxed anyone a southpaw as a pro. My last my last one before that was Jason Cunningham in the ABAs, I think. So it, it was a long, long time before I boxed a pro, um, a southpaw as a pro. So I didn't adapt to it very well. Uh, I don't mind them again now. I, I actually don't mind them. I used to love southpaws as an amateur, but yeah, by the time I got in with Tete, I hated southpaws. Because they are the nightmare anime, especially when the world, because it, it was well though, Tete. Obviously, he's been caught for cheating with. Would you, are you not applying for that in your no contest? Do you know what? I haven't even thought about it because it, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know I know Jason's got his down as a no contest, but yeah, that, he has, yeah. He, he either got drug tested after my fight as well because I got drug tested, so either passed that one. It just all depends. Like obviously, Joe is the mate, when you're on stuff. Situation: How many times do you reckon he's passed drug tests and it's probably been in his system or? Anyone yeah. else? About in the path. If your cycles right, your cycles right, and yeah. if your cycles bang on, then your cycles right. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. He's just been unfortunate. He's been caught. But listen, get all the cheats out of the sport. If if why is he getting a three year ban and others are only getting six months or some aren't even getting a ban? Exactly. You know they threw the bucket in, mate. Do you know why? Yeah. The, no, why you didn't sell tickets. After him, so many tickets. Exactly. Bang didn't sell tickets. Me. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't so sell tickets. Mate. So what the the of course it is. Like, like obviously, you t- talk to us about in a way, mate. Like going into that fight, obviously, be a two times world champion. You have got to win his mentality, mate. You didn't go into that fight like, wanting to lose. You know what I mean, what was your game and going into it? In it, what were you thinking during it? Obviously, we, we had the game plan of of let's have a look in for the first three, four rounds. Obviously, everyone expected me to get bladdered in the first one or two rounds because that's all they had all over my time feed yeah, all yeah. it won't it won't last a round it won't last two rounds i knew i was a bit too clever on my feet and my de- defense was too good to to be to be bladdered in a round or two i knew it couldn't happen you well so my, yeah i think i think my plan was and joe's was let's have a look at him let's see what he's like we knew how tight he was at the weight so let's have a look at him for four or five rounds Let's see what the legs are like. And I do think, I can't remember what round it was. I thought it was like six or seven, maybe. I thought his legs started going a bit flat and I started letting a few of my shots go and I was landing a bit. But then he changed his game plan up. He put his hands behind his back. He was trying to draw me in. And then that just changed my whole game plan. I was thinking, he's trying to draw me in to fall short so he can nail me. And I just, it just, yeah, it flew completely. So, at times, I couldn't even throw because I knew what he was doing. He, he's that he's that much of a clever fighter that he's thinking to get me out my shell so he can nail me. Do you know what I mean? And he's done that with loads of people. He's moving forward on the chest part, is not he? Yeah, yeah. He, he's done it with loads, mate. He's done it with... He, well, he, he, he played into... Uh, not Maloney's hands. He's done it with um, Manny Rodriguez, who just retired today, actually. Shame to see. Um, but he done it with him. He went and met Manny head on because he knew Manny had met him head on, and he nailed him with a left hook. They say never hook with a hooker, and he nailed Manny yeah. with a left hook, and then he done him to the body in the end. What was the experience like though, mate? Getting to Japan, what was it all like? Because like, you took fans over there as well, didn't you? Yeah, I took about 40, 40 of the lads over. Yeah, it was good. It was good experience to be That's fair. Neat. I think. I think. Um, once we got there, they looked after us. They really did look after us. You can't knock them for that. 
Uh, as it got to fight day, they started throwing a few spanners in the works, you know what I mean? Like messing around with wraps, messing around with gloves. Um, just just silly little things like you go into the ring in five minutes. We hadn't even got our gloves on, we weren't even warm. And we were like, come on, behave yourself. No, we're, we're not going to get you five minutes. Yeah, they were, they, were, they were just trying to like, you know, pull the shots on everything, like making me take my gloves off when, when my gloves were on. And I was like, fucking hell, come on. Just, do you know what I mean? Like, just trying to pull little fast ones where, just trying to get me to the ring. Trying to unsettle you, around there. Basically, yeah. And then they were all coming in the room where I was warming up, like talking away, stopping me from warming up, trying to talk to us. In the end, Joe just said, listen, do me a favour. If you're nothing to do with our team and you're nothing to do with drug testing, get the fuck out of the room. And he kicked them all out. Start without and... you. Exactly. They they can't start without me. So we, we got warm in the end. We got warm. Um and then we went out when we were ready, to be fair. Um they didn't pester us once Joe kicked them all out of the room. Were you scared going to that fight, Paul? You know, I was, I think nah. I, every fight should be scared of every fight, but did you have any fear in, in, in that fight? Going into it? No, I, I had I had butterflies. I was nervous like every other fight, do you know what I mean? I, I had that edge about me where I knew I couldn't slip up and I knew it could be lights out at any Not moment. Me but I, I knew I knew it was it was a different kettle of fish to previous fights. But I weren't like scared as in like, oh fuck me, I'm going into the lion's den here. Yeah. Because right. I've been I've been under pressure before, uh, where people have thought I ah, didn't lose this one anyway. Manny Rodriguez, he had three weeks' notice. Um, no one expected me to beat Sultan. No one expected me to beat Casemiro. I know I didn't box Casemiro, but no one expected me to win. If we did fight uh, in both fights that we were meant to fight, um, so I've had that pressure before. So it wasn't something that was brand new to me. I knew I was I knew I was the underdog, and I knew I was going into the Lions Den. But I actually. You went for more talk. I, I, a little bit. I was like, yeah, let, let's go. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't mind this. So what, like, what were they like after? Did they treat you well after? Or did they, once you'd have done the fight, did they shot you away like a loose bag? Do you know what? It, it was mad after the fight. I had a banging Eddie. Um, and, and they wouldn't let me take paracetamol or nothing. And all they kept saying was, go, go to the toilet, go drug testing, come on, drug testing. I'd just done 11 rounds under the lights in a roasting arena, I was dehydrated, and I couldn't piss. dehydrated? Mate, they were throwing bottles of water at me, drink, drink, drink. Oh, wow. And the more I drank, the more I felt sick because I was drinking that fast, that fast. And I was going, wow, I feel sick. And they were going, do you want to go hospital? Do you want to? I was going, wow, just leave me alone, just give me two minutes. I had to lie down on the floor, making the all circled me. And I was like, wow, what the fuck? I was looking up and they're all circling, looking at me. I was like, oh, my God. I said, just give me some paracetamol. I said, I'll go to the toilet yeah, in a minute. Yeah, banging as well. Mate, it was. And they wouldn't give me no paracetamol. They wouldn't let me take the paracetamol. Um, so I think after about a couple of hours, uh, I had me piss. I'd done my drug testing. Um, and then we got on the bus. And I think we got on the bus at about... Because uh, I boxed pretty early over there. I think it was about nine o'clock, their main event. By the time I got into the... So it was? Yeah, it was It was early there, do you know what I mean? It weren't like an half ten here or, or anything like that. It was like about nine o'clock, their main event over there. And then we got in the we got in the bus. And then from the bus, we were in the hotel. And I think I think we had about four hours sleep. And then we were we were on the bus going to the, to the um, airport and we were gone. They, they didn't have us. They didn't have us in for like a day or two in Japan afterwards. And off like I was being shattered on that home, were you? I was knackered on the plane home, but luckily so enough, what, we were like, business. What a lot of people want to know, mate. When you, about it, anyway, is does he as hard as he looks? Or is it? I think it's timing and speed. What is it? What did you find with him? Yeah, I think it was timing and speed. Um, because when he did hit me flush on the chin, I didn't mind it that bad. I knew it'd been hit, and I thought, yeah, yeah. For instance, he hit me at the end of, I think it was about round eight, and he hit me right on the bell, boom, right hand, right down the middle, flush on the chin. Probably the ones he's put everyone over with previously. And I remember sitting on the stool, yeah. and I can't remember a thing Joe said to me. I just remember thinking, wow. And then when he said, stand up, <laughs> my legs were still like numb. And I was like, fuck, move your feet, move your feet, move your feet. 
And for that round, I can't really remember. So he does it very, very hard. But um, yeah, I, I do well, think well, it's more. Like, so, it was a it was eleventh round when it got you. Eleventh round body shot, yeah. What was, what was it? Was it fatigue or like a concentration, or did he set his trap up? No, right? I think I think he set he, he set up a nice left up to the body, right? I think um, he, he he rushed me back to the ropes, uh, and I think he comes over to he comes over with a right hand or a right hook over the top, which then sort of probably lifted my elbows up ever so slightly, and he put one around the side. And uh, yeah, they're just sickening them body shots. Sickening. I've always looked at people for body shots, like. Come That's on, get off. Well. Exactly. And do you know what? I've handed that many out. I think it was about time I took one myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't move if you mate. Oh, fucking hell. Well, we, we're the good fight. If, if you could change fight. anything. Sorry, what was that? I said, we had a good fight. That was my second fight in the Olympia, wasn't it? Yeah, look, you make me that many jabs. I was gagging for a right by the end of the first round, man. But <laughs> if you could, um, go on. In, in the way, Mirrod, if you could ch- if you could go back in time and do a fight again, is there anything you would change the way you would think you could get that win or is he just too good? I do think he is that good. Um, I think he'll be very hard to stop. I think I think if he does get stopped, I think it'll maybe be super feather if he was to even attempt that. I think featherweight. I think he will. I think he'll win world titles at featherweight. Um, do you? It's just, yeah, I do think he'll. I, I, I think he'll win world titles at featherweight. Yeah, I think he's just. I think he is that good. Um, his speed's that good. His power's he's that good. Elite. I think he's, he's elite. Yeah, he's a generation fighter. Yeah, he is. Like you, he, you go down as one of the pound for pound greats of all generations. Do you know what I mean? Because there's not many people that come up from. I think it was like Fly right? he started. Like fly, and he's up at is he, super banter. Would you now. say he's clean? No, <laughs> I wouldn't. Because you, it's it's like the same. Pacquiao, Pacquiao wasn't clean. He's never been proven not to be. Do you know what I mean? But you can't go no. from what Pacquiao did from no. life fly with fly with and start putting like like super well weights. It's impossible. You can't you can't go through them weights and just like knock people clean out. He wasn't doing it down at like. When he was down at like flyweight and stuff, he was he was he was stopping them, but like stopping them on the feet and stuff. He weren't doing what he's doing now, which is strange. He's putting people out cold now, isn't he? In the way, fast asleep. Do you know what I mean? And the big lads as well. Did you see? Did you think see anything suspicious over there when you like behind closed doors? No. Well, it is one for you. We get on the scales, um, and he was over. He was only over by a few ounces, and I'm not shitting you right. He got off the scales. He didn't even take his boxes off. He walked. He's probably walked. He was gone for no longer than four minutes. He walked out the room, and you can go round the back of the room. And as he came back round the room, he came back in the other side, stripped his clothes off again, and he was underweight. He was lighter than me. And I thought, how the fuck's he How'd done that? And he didn't even take his boxes off the second time of getting on the scales. That's a bit dodgy and a bit fishy, isn't it? How the fuck's he done that? I sat there scratching my head thinking, how's he done that? You know the game, you you can't do that. You can't. That can't be done really, can you? We've gone no longer than four minutes, I'm not lying. So, anyway. I weighed him do you think there's any do you think he beats me with me was like a featherweight? Who? Well, obviously Ramirez is a Cuban. Do you think he can beat him a featherweight? Ooh, I don't know. Um it, it all depends. Do you know what I think will beat him? Someone that can pop a bit and keep him away. I think him and yeah. Lopez will be feather. You have to be him a any respect on you. Feather. Because Lopez is is um He's very wily and he stands in front of you and he throws from all different angles. And I think he'll probably stand there with with um, Inoue. But it's if Inoue hasn't put him away. It all depends if Lopez's chin's decent, do you know what I mean? It's Inoue's speed. Inoue, that time, and that time it's, it it's frightening. How it was, he catches him and accurate, mate, really accurate he is. Yeah, is he the best well. person you've been in the ring with? Yeah, 100%. It's the way he puts you in certain positions with his feet by doing nothing. 
he puts it in certain areas of the ring and then unleashes his shots. And he's he's very clever and very good at what he does. Going back to your world title wins, wins mate. The, obviously, you had the IBF and the WBO. What what was your biggest out of them? Uh, I loved the what WBO. Do you to be what fair. do you think? Me, me WBO. Come? Just because I know me, I know everyone says Army oh, first world title meant the most, but I just think that that I think it was all just a rush at the time, and I think because I knew I was giving it up, it and I probably didn't appreciate it as much back then as I do now. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, um, I'm a lot older, yeah. I'm a lot wise. I know what the sport's about. Back then, it was all such like crash bang wallop. He's got a world title. He's giving it up, and we're going down a weight now. This time, I knew how much it meant. I knew if I lost a Sultan, it was pretty much the end of me. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't really come back from a Sultan loss. Um, so that was a big win for me. Would you say, it's uh, fair to say that was your best performance? I'd say that was my best performance to date, yeah. I think the he, he had an eight-week training camp for, for me personally, knowing that Casemiro could potentially fail weight. Um, we, had an, we had a ten-week well, training camp Casemiro. for Casemiro. So within... I think it was three days we had to come up with a game plan for Sultan, where Sultan had been working for me for eight weeks. So for me to come up with that game plan in three days, well, Joe, to come up with that game plan in three days, uh, pretty much over the phone, we didn't have... The only time we actually threw shots and worked on it was in the changing rooms. So it was all over the yeah, phone. Yeah. All over the phone. Like, we were both watching uh, Sultan... See how he does this. See how he does that. Watch, look, look at him sparring there. Look when he gets in with this kid compared to that kid. Um, and we worked on it. And the only time we threw shots was in the changing rooms the night of the fight. Mm. And it, it, it worked the protection, though, didn't it? Like you, you nailed up the uh, game plan that night, mate. You're brilliant. Perfect. I think there was a few times in that fight where I wanted to let my hands go a little bit more, but, but Joe wouldn't let me. He was just like, stick to the game plan. Let's get the win and let's get out of here. Do you know what I mean? But let's do you know what I want to talk about. Your dad's rolling your career because he's had a massive influence on you. Yeah, John, yeah. tell us a bit about that. Yeah, ever, ever since I was a kid, my dad's always always advised me, and he's always advised me well. I think, uh, especially in the pro game, because one of his best mates was was Paul Lloyd, Paul Livewire Lloyd, who was British Commonwealth European champion, also boxed for the IBF bantamweight title against Tim Austin. He boxed Marco Antonio Brera for the WBO bantamweight title as well. So. My dad was always in and around the game and he knew how the game worked. And I think, yeah, I, bo I boxed you in my second pro fight and it weren't on a Frank Warren show. It was on a, um, a Vaughan show in Liverpool. And Dean Powell, God rest his soul, he um, he rang me up a few weeks before and said, I've got a fight there for you, but the money's not there. He said, will you fight? And I said, what's it for? And he said, a grand. And I said, go on, I'll fight. So my dad, I rang, I rang my dad and I said, I've got a fight, I'm buzzing, mate. I've got a fight, I'm fighting. Where? I told him. Um, and he goes, what, what are you boxing for, how much? I said, a grand. And he said, ring him back and tell him no. He said, why? I said, I'm fighting. He was like, ring him back and tell him no. He said, because if you lower yourself now, in six weeks' time when you're boxing on one of their shows, they'll say, oh, the money's not there. Um, Paul, there's a grand or there's two grand. And I said, oh, yeah. So my dad rang him and he said, oh, Paul's not boxing with a grand. He said, no chance. He said, he's just not boxing on the show. In the end, we came up with a ticket deal. Um, I sell a lot of tickets uh, and I ended up getting more than my grand around for what I was on anyway, contract-wise. I think I walked away with about five or six grand yeah. instead of... I think I walked away with about five or six grand instead of four grand what I was on on a Frank Warren show. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what, mate? People don't realise, right, especially at the early stages of careers like that, how, in, how instrumental having an influence like that around you is, because that's where I, I'd said, yeah, I'll fight you, that'll do me, that, do you know what I mean? I'm, 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 and I had no one to say, no, he wants more than that, because you're right, if you take it once, mate, that's it, every single week, that's what they offer you, do you know what I mean? Because I know you won't accept it. Yeah, you've lowered yourself then straight away, haven't you? And that they know then in future, yeah, he's always happy to box for less anyway, he just wants to fight that kid. But, um, yeah. yeah, my dad was yeah, on the phone. Exactly. That. Is that the only time you've had money issues? Like, what was the reason you left Eddie Hearn? Yeah. Um, 
Do you know what? I think he saw... I, I don't like a five-fight deal with Eddie. There was no, like, contract signing or anything with Eddie. It was... Uh, we just said, we'll, we'll have a five-fight deal. Um, first one being Stewie Hall. He promised us Jamie McDonnell. Um, that was in a... The Stewie Hall rematch was an eliminator for Jamie McDonnell. Jamie McDonnell then obviously yeah. went down the big money route, which was in new way, um, which is fair enough. Uh, then we, we kept getting promised stuff. Uh, a boxed on. Do you ever remember the Chamberlain? Um, Chamberlain boxed. Oh, who did he box? He's just lost his world title now to um, Cruiserweight. It was a pre. It would have been previous, would it? No. Um, he's just lost it to the Bournemouth kid. Well, anyway, I boxed on that show. In oh, Lawrence Coley. Yeah, Lawrence Coley boxed Chamberlain in a stinker, and I boxed on that bill just in an eight rounder. Um, and then we had. He kept saying, "I've got you in a fight. I've got you a world title fight." Nothing ever came of it. And then he rang us on the Monday, so we had three weeks. Saturday to fight um, Emmanuel Rodriguez. And I was like, haven't you got another date? I said, I can't make weight in that. I said, that isn't enough time. Three weeks, three and a half weeks. Uh, no, that's it. Because Manny wanted a certain amount of money. I needed a certain amount of money. And there weren't no show financially big enough other than the Bell You Hey rematch that could pay us. That's what he was saying anyway. So we come up with a we come up with a deal, uh, the price what we wanted, um, and from that deal was X amount from JD, um, because the money that he was offering us wasn't quite enough. So he said, "I'll I'll offer you money from JD as well that'll bunk the purse up." Are you happy with that? We said, "Yeah, I'm happy with that." Get to the weighing. Uh, I failed weight. I, there was no way I was taking off nearly two stone in three and a half weeks. It made me ill. To be fair. Week before fight week, I was ill as fuck. Yeah, you wouldn't be afraid. Mate, I was ill as fuck. But anyway, we get there. We we failed weight. We knew we were failing weight. Um, and then we says to Eddie, um, what's happening with this JD money? And he said, oh, they pulled out and just like turned this back. I thought, wow. He turned this back on my dad, and my dad was like, wow, fucking hell. So I ended up boxing for the money that I didn't want to box for, and I got three and a half weeks notice. Oh, fucking hell. And then I boxed on one more show it's after that. And that. Yeah, and then I boxed on the beefy Eggington fight after that. Uh, and then that was it then. I just, I just didn't bother. I didn't bother trying to contact him. Uh, I think he had one fight left with the deal that he said, which was, it's just an agreement, basically. You don't, you don't sign a contract. It's just my word for yeah. your word, basically. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then... Back then, COVID it, and then um, back then it was MTK, and they got on the phone, and I, I, I done a deal with them, and and that was that. So who's who's who, who do you, like who's the best from what you've worked with? I don't mean I mean in the past, not MK because you're with them now, obviously. But in the past, yeah. I was Frank or Eddie. Who did you prefer? It be under Frank, mate. I thought Frank was straight down the middle. Frank was was honest. He got you good opportunities. Um, back then, there was a few issues with money with Frank, but nothing, nothing, nothing where I'd never ever got money. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I'd wait a little while to get me money, but that was back then. I, I'm I'm sure that's not the issue now. But but definitely, if I had to pick, it would go back with now. It'd be Frank in a heartbeat. Yeah, I thought that's an easy question, so mate. I think I would. Like if I had the choice, yeah. I'd be Frank all day. I think proper box it will go, Frank. Yeah, Frank was honest. He was straight down the middle. Um, done the job that he said. Do you know what I mean? He he, he got you the titles that he said, and uh, there was no bullshit with Frank. I've, I, I've heard um, you've done some uh, spam with one of my mates on your Ross Burton show. What was that like? Yeah, uh, God, that was a while ago, Ross. Yeah, I think he was boxing for a WBO European title, and I've done some sparring with him. Yeah. Um, I was only just up and coming then as well as he was boxing for them titles. Um, we had some good spars. He was, he was a, a strong lad. Nice kid though, Ross. Um, yeah, he's a gentleman anyway. Yeah, I think 
I think Ryan Rhodes brought him down actually. Well. Yeah, he could. Yeah, he, he, he was bigger than me at the time. I think. I think he did. He box up for. Uh, sorry, bantamweight. I think bantamweight or sort of bantam max. I think it was bantamweight. Yeah, yeah. But he, I, he think was I, was ranked, well. I think he's ranked in the top ten in the world. Are you tired? He was doing was well. He, yeah. yeah, fair dues to him. I think so. Uh, mate, and, yeah. What was yeah, um? Yeah, so obviously, you you and Sam have still done a lot of sparring over the years. Was it, did yeah. you do many in the amateurs or just in the pros? Both. He, he was pretty much my main sparring partner for, through the amateurs. Uh, and then when we turned pro, um, I think I'd done quite a few rounds with him um, when he was boxing Did that fight for... Did come close? That have been an unbelievable fight, that, in the early in the oh, it, it was close a few times when we were under Frank. He was down at flyweight, I was up at Superfly, and there was always talks of it. But he always... He held the British, Commonwealth and European at... at um, Super at flyweight, and I held the British, I think, yeah. at, at Superfly and the Commonwealth. I, I think I'd just won a world title actually, and then there was always talk of me and him uh, if I was to win a world title. The tough thing about Kev was he, he was always promised world titles at flyweight, and I think that's why he retired because nothing ever came of him. Do you know what I mean? I think he was hard done by. He come nice close to the shoe can fight, and he could win Olympics. Yeah. Zhu Shiming. Oh, I mean, he's, a, he's a top, he's a gentleman. Yeah, he's a great yeah, lad. Kev, I, I think he got injured, though, didn't he? had an altercation in the streets. Yeah, I still see Kev now. He's a, he's made you, you two, like, you two are the best people I've boxed by a mile. You're like, he's a different level from anyone else I've been in the ring with, to be fair. Yeah. And you just be honest with me, for the lighter weight, especially out of Liverpool, he's a shine of life for the last 10 years or so. Yeah, I think, I think we've, well, especially for the lighter weight, yeah, I think we've done pretty well. Oh, on mate, on the the well, so what's your plans going for, Paul? Because obviously you didn't get on boxing to New last year. Um, I boxed in Uzbekistan about two and a half, three months ago, but it's not been down on box rec yet for some reason. I think the details oh, yeah. that they, yeah, they've they they haven't put the details right or something. Um, so there's an error on the system. That's what we're hearing anyway. So when you when you're looking out to be next, what's your, what's your plan? What do you like? What what more do you want to achieve in the sport now? Because you you won two world titles, mate. You're far from dispute. With what like what more is there for you? I want another world title, mate. <laughs> I want another world title. I know. I know it sounds fucking. I'm 35 in about three weeks, and do you know what? I still feel 25. I feel fresh. I've been sparring today with Isaac Lowe. I feel good. And Isaac Lowe's a featherweight. Do you know what I mean? And I'm I'm still mixing it with the big boys and, and the boys that are, are up and coming as yeah, well. Exactly. So I feel like I feel I feel like I'm in a good place. I don't feel like I'm slowing down. And I've always said the day I feel like my performances are dipping is the day I'll jib it. Yeah. So when do you want to be out next? Have you got anyone lined up? Anyone any names you want? Uh mate, I'd have I've, I've I texted my promoter the other day asking for that. I think it's Santiago, the, the WBC world champion at Bantamweight. Um, and he said he's just trying to work on a few things for me, which sounds to me like it's it's not going to be Santiago. But um, it it sounds like they, they've got plans for me. Do you know what I mean? And I need a fight. I've told them I'm ready for title fights back end in November or December. So... I want to be out in December. Like, get, I need, I need to be out. Do you know what I mean? I've had two and a half minutes this year. A man of the, a man at the age of thirty. You have to be cream, mate. You need to be active. I need to be active. I've only had two and a half minutes this year. So, before I let you go, Paul, mate, let's give me your intake on there. This mix, like, say exact what's going on with Tommy Fury and all that shit. What do you make of it all? Because cause I know this crap. Mate, I don't watch it, but it's a load of shit. And do you know what? For for boxers like me, yourself, that... Of course it is a fucking crap. Yeah, it's terrible. It's a, it's a big circus, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's for... It's not for us. It's not for us boxing fans. It's for, it's for the YouTube fans, basically. And that's why they're getting so many numbers. Um, and that's why they're getting paid so well. People like me and you that have put years and years well, and years into boxing, 
it doesn't doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with me at all, mate. So it's the, the top uh, five pay per views this year, mate, in boxing. Two of them, right? Second and third, and from the mixed with uh, that crap over there. So it's fucking shite, isn't it? But Tommy I don't Fury know how they get moved. KSI at the weekend, and I think it's KSI against someone else's second third. Wow, it's just, it's ridiculous, mate. It's like, it's laughable, isn't it? Because they wouldn't last. I don't know how Tommy Fury's not getting rid of these people. Do you know what I mean? You've well, got to walk it's, 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 But the thing is, though, that's, do you not think that's what the way boxing's going now for? Because it's all about money now, isn't it? I've always said, for the last year or two, boxing's fucking on its ass. It's not what it used to. Imagine Marvin Agler, Hearns, um, Duran. Imagine all them being in this era now. It, it it's it's shocking, like. Mate, this area, it's. I think boxing sold the sold the sports dead. To be honest, yeah, I think it's been sold along that. What the devil? And it's not coming back. It is, mate. I think you bang on, and I think one man to blame, and that's at the end. For you, yeah. Paul, I'm... Yeah, money. Yep, yeah, money, mate. That's who's to blame. The money men, the men in suits. They're the ones who are ruining the sport. Do you know what I mean? Those fighters, it's all these men in suits. At the end of the day, right? Yeah. It's them men in suits are promoters that who accepted this in the first place. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on our screens now. I know, I know. It's it's a uh, it's a shame, but like you say, that's the way boxing's going at the moment. So, last question, bro. What's your uh, prediction? Who's in Fury when it happens? Looks like December, undisputed. I yeah, I'm looking forward to it. To be fair, um, I think if they were the both same height, same weight, Usyk wins. But that 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 isn't mm. true. That like I I do I, I believe Tyson will stop him just through sheer size and weight and just know how. Do you know what I mean? He knows how to wear people down. I think I think I do think he'll get to Usyk. I think. Where others haven't been able to close him down, I think Tyson will close him down. I think Tyson will use his weight, his advantages. And I just think Tyson will be too much. In big my for opinion, Mayor Fury will stop winning round. Yeah, I do think he's Tyson too well will. Stop. Do you know what I mean? He's got the way to close him down. He's got the IQ. He can box him in a long way with his jab if you want to. Or he can come at him as a wrecking ball. It won't go past eight rounds. And I think under Sugar Hill, I think Sugar Hill likes stoppages, doesn't he? He always demands a knockout. Yeah, he does, so he does, yeah. Tyson, I think Tyson will go out there and I think he'll put it on him and he'll use his sheer size because at the end of the day, if he wanted to make Cruiserweight again, you sick he would. Yeah. He's just... He's just me, it's been an absolute pleasure having you, by the way. We really appreciate your time. Love, loves so, it, mate. When you, when you get a fight date, mate, let me know and we'll get you back on. Hopefully it's for another world title. Of course. As soon as I get a fight date, I'll give it a shout. Yeah, give us a message, mate. Right, appreciate that, by the way, Paul. Good night, Paul. Thanks for having me, friend. Cheers, mate. I appreciate it, mate. See you later. No worries. Tell me.